Today we're going to be taking on the Cadfell Trail Part 2. We're going to be having a bit of a investigate of this area of Shrewsbury by the English Bridge. And we're going to have a bit of a walk up into the town, up, up the hill, up Wild Cop. Find out what it was called in Cadfell's day. Some of its history and see what could possibly remain there may not be much but we'll be filling it in with lots of good detail from ellis peters and her wonderful um, brother cadfell chronicles which ran from the late 1970s until 1995 the actual books and of course the tv series which was a big 1990s hit We'll be calling in St Mary's Church again in the centre of Shrewsbury um, with its Anglo-Saxon foundations and we're going to be having uh, a bit of a focus on some of the stained glass in there which is information that has only recently come to light to me um, from a recent book I bought which is going to be very handy for third rate content videos in the upcoming future. It's not the Holy Grail quest but it's definitely got connections with what we were talking about on the Whittington Castle video, which I wasn't expecting at all, and the Knights Templar. So buckle up and I'll see you out here. So let us once again travel back into the world created by Ellis Peters, Brother Cadfell, the medieval sleuth in the Cadfell. Chronicles. In Brother Cadfell's day, the bridge that would have stood where the English bridge is now would have had um, a section that could be raised, and it was in fact raised in the evenings. It was an ent entrance into Shrewsbury, the main part of Shrewsbury, and it was kept secure, as well as having buildings, uh, dwellings and shops on it. Of course, it doesn't stand here now. It was replaced in 1769, and it was this bridge was built by John Carline, who has come up in quite a few, well, in a fair few of our third-rate content adventures up to now. The bridge was rebuilt in the 1920s, it'd be fair to say, but using the decorations of John Carline that we can see here. The original Carline bridge was too narrow and with increasing road traffic, the bridge had to be widened as it was a major through fare into Shrewsbury. Yes, in Brother Cadfell's time, the area where we are now, just by the first arch on the town side of the English Bridge, was known as Under the Wile. Arnold Fishmonger had a, his business here, mooring his boat just under the bridge. And treasure was hidden here by Torald. Blund 
and he hid Fitz Allen, at Fitz Allen's valuables here attached to a rope in the Chronicle One Corpse Too Many and the corpse of Jean Lithwood became entangled on the same rope or chain um, so yeah it was quite a scene of uh, death and action for Brother Cadfell and just about here Aldwin was murdered in the Heretic's Apprentice. Judith Pearl was abducted by boat here. And it was also here that there was a illicit and illegal dice party attended by Simon Poor. He would have been poor after the dice party, I imagine. And Daniel Arifabar. Yeah, quite the scene of many illegal and nefarious activities in the Cadfell Chronicles. Yeah, it's nice to see the flood water has gone down significantly since we were last in this area. Yeah, just by the English bridge, you've got the depth gauge. You've got this probably window from the 1700s. Can you hear that? Water still dripping. This building would have been erected quite a bit after the times of Brother Cadfell, about a hundred years later. This is the Franciscan Friary. If I'm saying it wrong, tell me in the comments. Yeah, but this was the order of the Grey Monks, I think their nickname was. going up onto what is today, Wild Cop. But in the days of Brother Cadfell, the street would have been simply known as the Wild. Of course, there really isn't anything left um, visibly from the days of Brother Cadfell. Although some ancient buildings down this street, timber frame black and white ones, they all date from the 1400s and onwards, generally. And then, obviously, lots of Georgian facades and buildings. Yeah, foundations of the Nags Head date back to the 1300s. And that's got to be one of the oldest on Wildcock. Yeah, the houses were built along little alleys called shots. They were called this because they sh could be shut off for security. The alleys, like today, were also shortcuts for pedestrians. So, I mean, they could have ran along this route in the days of Brother Cadfell. See, the Lion Hotel is still shut off to the public. You know, full of um, economic migrants, if you don't mind me saying so. It's a crying shame, really, that such a historic building 
a, a crown jewel or a jewel of Shrewsbury is a no-go area. Constance's cousin lived here. Martin Bellacote's carpenter shop stood halfway up on the right, just before turning into Dog Pole. Got this beautiful little court just uh, off Dog Pole. Looking down dog pole onto well caught. And today you don't need fire insurance to get cover from the fire service, thankfully. Yeah, it was thought in Brother Cadfell's day there would have been a gate or a low gate, lower than that, that you had to stoop or duck under to get into dog pole. Obviously, it would have looked really different then, and that is where. Dog pole perhaps gets its name um, from ducking to duck and pole as in summit of hell. Yeah, and it would have actually been called dodge pole or dog e pole. It's D O G G E pole. So, you know, the pronunciation's up to you. I'm not 100% sure about it. Tell me in the comments if you know. Yeah, St. Mary's Church just peek well more than peeking out over the skyline it's actually far higher than anything close yes, to so it. the massive western tower here at St. Mary's one of the tallest spires in the country was actually added to the original Norman building built on Saxon foundations the Saxon foundations were actually discovered in the 1800s during restoration work. But like I say, it was built in 1170. So that is some 20 years after the times of Brother Cadfell. So we're just gonna go into St. Mary's and uh, deviate from the Brother Cadfell and segue into the Holy Grail quest. Although um, Brother Cadfell, a crusader, former crusader, would have been aware of the Knights Templar. They would have, uh, uh, although it's not stated that he was a member, he would have been aware of them because they were getting pretty big by his brother Cadfell's time over in the Holy Land. So anyway, let's find out about Bernard of Clairvaux and some of the stained glass inside St. Mary's. St. Mary's is said to have one of the finest collections of stained glass in the country. Most of it was bought from elsewhere, other countries often. Interestingly, we've got three windows. The 16th century stained glass windows come from Attenberg Abbey near Cologne in Germany. They depict scenes from the life of Bernard of Clairvaux, who went on to be canonised as Saint Bernard. Bernard, who uh, founded the Cistercian monks, preached for crusades and helped found the Knights Templar, the mysterious order of warrior monks who have associations with the Holy Grail and whose members had to eschew uh, mortal, material pleasures and live like monks. Of course, the Knights Templar were founded in 1119. Their patron was listed as St. Bernard of Clairvaux, and their headquarters was the Temple Mount Jerusalem, Kingdom of Jerusalem. This is according to Wikipedia. And Bernard of Clairvaux was born in 1090 in Burgundy, France, and died in 1153 
at Clairvaux Abbey in Champagne, France. This fine continental glass is um, from Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands. And it was collected by the Reverend William Rowland, who was the vicar of St. Mary's from 1828 to 1852. And what we're looking at here is the Jesse window. It represents the tree of Jesse and traces the genealogy of Jesus back to David's father, Jesse. The figure of Jesse is seen lying horizontally in a deep sleep across the three centre lights. From him arises a vine which connects above with the kings and prophets of Israel and the figures of Mary and Joseph with the infant Jesus, St Matthew and St Luke above this are scenes depicting the nativity baptism and crucifixion. It is thought that the Jesse window, um, the centre of it, the main themes, is about 60% medieval. Yeah, this arch definitely looks Romanesque or Norman. Yes, Harris fencing is becoming more ubiquitous than yew trees in churchyards. I am joking, I'm being slightly hyperbolic there. But thank you for joining me on our Brother Cadfell, Brother Cadfell's Shrewsbury part two. It's been a great adventure once again and tour around Shrewsbury on this absolutely freezing early January day. This is one of the filled in Norman arches we were just talking about. But um, we're gonna come back very soon and have a look at the interior of St. Mary's once again. We've got some new information, got a new book. Um, I'll tell you all about it when we come here next time because it's really interesting information and it ties in with what we were talking about when we were at Whittington Castle, e.g. Knights Templar and whatnot. It's something I wasn't expecting, but we'll be coming back here uh, very soon. But it's been a really interesting walk today. And thanks for watching to the end. If you did enjoy, why don't you leave a like, subscribe, and, all, and by all means, leave a comment. I do love a good comment and I love to have a chat with subscribers and anybody who wants to talk really i'm that sort of guy really <laughs> i could talk a glass eye to sleep but anyway joking aside thank you and if i don't see you soon i'll see you three times as soon third red content signing out bye bye